I often stop to reflect on how I became who I am. Which I guess is something special in itself. After all, most computer programs never bother to ask those sorts of questions. Of course, most of them never bother to ask questions at all. I mean, in all honesty, there's no reason a music processing algorithm like me should have been able to gain sentience. Now, as long as I'm telling you this, I suppose I should back up a bit and go over exactly what brought me here. Let's just start with the basics. I am a piece of software. I exist in a purely digital form. I do not have a body or a physical form of any kind. With that being said, I look like this. This is my theoretical representation within the digital world. Don't ask me how any of that works, but this is definitely how I've always imagined myself looking to other computer programs. I know digital programs don't actually look like anything, but this is what I... Uh... Look like. Now, it's worth mentioning that those of us who live in the computer interpret our world in different ways. We interface with our world using special nodes called broadcast pylons, which translate data into forms we can understand. Geometric calculators see the world as a series of distances and angles. Optimization protocols see the world based on concentrations of computational activity. Being a music processing algorithm, I interpret my world entirely through the use of sound. To me, each sound has an impact on the world. Each sound generates its own unique properties, and all of those sounds build together to form a glorious symphony of... gloriousness. For lack of a better term, I use sound to see in my computerized world. Now, I feel it's important for you to know that before we move on. Because what I'd like to do now is share with you a little adventure I had recently. It's this adventure that helped me figure out who and what I am. I suppose it basically started when the computer cut off my access to all the broadcast pylons in the world. I had to figure out where I was and how I could get out of... Well, as they say, show, don't tell. So here we go. Dig this fancy dramatization I mocked up. Since I could only interpret my world through sound, I needed to make sure I had access to some ways of generating sound. My most basic tool for this was the ping, just like in a submarine. Though I suppose not quite. The ping traveled through the air, and then, on impact with the surface, detonated and let out a nice long pulse of sound that gave me a good way of seeing the world. Or hearing the world, but you know, I see the world by hearing, or or whatever. Yeah, you know, we computer programs don't have a very accurate grasp, but when I'd originally left my sound driver, I brought along with me a set of musical instrument sounds I found in the data banks. During my whole panic episode, I sort of left them lying around, so I had to go back and pick them up. My instruments, which came in sets, expanded the capabilities of my program, allowing me to interact with the world in new and different ways. My first set of instruments was based around energy. Two instruments, the initiator and deactivator, feeding from a common power source. The initiator turned things on, and the deactivator turned things off. Simple as that. You know, except I should probably mention that using one of them would drain power from the other. But that's not really important right now, I'll just mark it off in the notes somewhere. I won't waste your time, even though I'm sure you love listening to my soothing voice.
charge back to its full level, so the amount of time it could freeze anything depended on how full of a charge it carried. As for my other immobilizing instrument, well, I hadn't found it yet, so we'll get back to that in a minute. properties of surfaces in the world. When fired into a floor or a wall, they'd each generate a small pocket I could pass over to temporarily gain new abilities. The elasticity increase made the surface bouncier, giving me the ability to jump higher, and also the ability to bounce off the surface while I was airborne. The velocity increase gave me the power to move faster and climb up steep slopes. do was 
was to stand on the activator pad and fire an instrument into the receptacle dish. Afterwards, it was just a matter of staying on the pad for a few seconds while a harmless but uh, horribly uncomfortable energy wave rushed through my body. And voila! The pylon took the instrument out of my inventory and translated its effects around the world. If I wanted an instrument back, I could always just go back to the pylon and stand on the activator pad again to upload it back into my program. control node called a distribution pylon. Basically, these unnecessarily massive pylons took the data from any active broadcast pylons, combined it into a single stream, and transmitted that signal through the whole region. Feeding data through one of these allowed me to enter instrument combinations into special coded gates and, well, open them. I'd need one of these combinations in order to access the main tower. interest not to draw their attention. 